Okay, this is not native here. It's in the far southeastern corner of Virginia, but it's much more of a Atlantic and Gulf Coastal. It's Florida. Even some of those southern states, it's towards the, the coast. So it's a very, very southern, more southern tree. Again, it, it doesn't care about the cold winter, uh, but ice will be a different story. So, threes, very long. They have, which we don't have here, a cone. Uh, this doesn't produce cones, so it's a lone, lonesome pine. Where there's no other pollinators around. The, the cones are like that big. You might have them on a mantle. People always pick them up and use them as decorations and stuff. So really big, tall, egg-shaped. They're wide. They're, they're eggs. They're, they look, they're the same shape as, as Virginia pine or that Austrian, but very big. Not super heavy, but, uh, but very, very large. Then the needles themselves kind of occur tufted at the ends of the branches. I think one of the best descriptions I've heard and I use is they the little twigs sort of look like uh, chimney sweep brushes. You ever swept out a chimney before or seen somebody? Those look like the little brushes they use on the ends there. So they have these tufted needles that are out on the, the ends. Ecologically, it's got a lot of interesting stories. This is a very fire adapted tree. For the first oh, three, five, seven years of its life, it grows as a clump of needles in the ground. And you would think you were looking at like a wire grass. It has this dense clump of foliage and produces no height. And what it's, what it's doing at that time is producing a big root system putting all its carbon into roots, nothing in the top. And then the ecosystems where it's native, it'll burn like every, on average, five years. So then a fire comes, and it burns up all the needles on the ground. And you might think, well, doesn't that kill this little green tuft of needles? Well, what it does is it scorches all the outside green ones. But there's so many, the bud and the cambium is hidden inside these leaves, and it doesn't get damaged. And then that's the environmental trigger for it to bolt out of the ground. And the first year, it might grow three to five feet after the fire. No branches. It's like a tele telescoping pole. It just goes whoop, right up. And the next year, it might go same height again with one little whirl of branches. And since it just had a fire, the next average fire is going to be about five years away. It's all the fuel's gone. And then by then, the, the, the scheme is the bark will be thick enough to survive the next one. It's also sort of an endangered ecosystem because about the last 50 years, they've been, they cut a lot of it and replanted it with loblolly, which grows a little faster. And so there's a lot of, in, a lot of interest. <coughs> you, you could end up working for these groups like this, like the Longleaf Pine Alliance. They'll, they're groups that will go to military bases, uh, conservation areas, and restore longleaf pines. They'll plant it. They'll, they do prescribed burning through these areas. And there's a lot of wildlife associated with them, too, like a very, very rare subspecies of fox. And it isn't a bad timber tree. It's, only, it's starting to get recognized, again, as itself, as a good timber tree. They grow much straighter than loblolly uh, without all the genetic improvement then they make much better poles. Like your telephone poles are all loblolly pine or long. So it makes a great pole. It's very, very strong.